they can do today. What Woody, do you think, Woody? Let's kick, let's kick things off, Woody. Come on, let's kick things off. We got all right. Okay, <laughs> y'all, it's time to scream. We're clashing now on Halloween. That golden ticket looks delightful, but more teams face an end. That's frightful. We are still in double elimination for the top side bracket. The Death Dealers facing off against INTZ for a spot in the playoffs if they win it here and now. INTZ, the much better known squad, having competed for many years and perfect wars time and again. Again, Death Dealers, though, having picked up a massive victory yesterday, are looking to get another upset and carry their team on. All right from the Death Dealers will be the first to attack with the La Loot Strat, diving deep in with these heroes. Might even get a scatter shot to start things off, Lady B. He just will, he might, he might get this with the queen. He's got the ability, he will get it done. But the question is, is he gonna get the three star yesterday coming so close to it with that 92%? And that's where they need to make these corrections today. They had two high hitting three stars that could have put them up on star count against what we saw a 14 star win for INTZ. So if they continue to bring that push, like we saw from MKMA, it could get it done. But here comes Lala with the Stone Slammer taking the lead to work its way into the Town Hall and the Warden ability to keep that safe passage through the Gigabomb. Death Dealers faced off against the previously world's qualified team, the Queen Walkers, yesterday and barely eked out a victory by a 1% damage margin. They picked up 12 stars total. All right was not one of the guys to get one of the triples, but he is looking fantastic to me right now. So many balloons still up and single target infernos are not going to be able to deal enough damage to knock them all down. The key threat on the backside still, though, is going to be that royal champion. Don't see a whole lot in his army to take her out except for the pups and the dragon. Pulling out a Lava Hound from the CC was definitely a misplay here, as All Right Now has a big roadblock to the final third star. It's the Headhunters that helped take her out. Did you see the split of the loons going through, taking on the scatter shot? That was huge there. And yes, while that Hound was a distraction, he had the Headhunters that took down the Royal Champion, take it out, Dragon supporting, and the Pups and the Minions coming through. But this shaped up into a beautiful three-star and a little bit of victory for All Right coming into the second day here, starting his team off strong, but also reclaiming where he was at 8% shy from the three star yesterday. Well, fantastic finish for all right. I thought it might have gotten close there at the end, but it turned out he actually had plenty of time to get the drop in. Death Dealers coming in strong against an INTZ squad, but do not count these Brazilians out. They have picked up perfect wars before. Just like we've said, they performed so well yesterday with 14 stars total against Nova Maudo. And the worst hit was from Renan, a 97% two star, so tight. And he's gonna be starting off first for this INTZ squad, bringing in mass dragons and bats as well. Single target infernos po perform very poorly against the bats, so expect to see Renan knocking down that multi, uh, or maybe even using a free spell to take care of it while he works the dragons in a pancake sweep across this base. Yeah, he's going to want to keep those dragons in a nice straight line, but the one thing he wants to make sure that he focuses on is taking as much splash damage down at the start. He does have four freezes, which will help out the bats, but he needs to play this right. We also notice that he's bringing in the Ice Golem, and the Royal Champion can help support that, but he is starting her off a bit early here to take on the air defense and start shaping up the pathing on one side here so he can use the heroes on the opposite side to get that continuous push in for the dragon. And now lined up the direct path to the town hall. I'm curious to see if he's going to use a stone slam or if he's going to switch it up for a blimp. But as he comes in with a nice clean line and right there at the start with the town hall, my assumption is he was going to keep the stone slammer intact. Skeletons are pulling the dragons toward the outside of the base, and that could be problems. It looks like they're pathing back in now, and Renan is on task to victory. Grabs the first star with a stone slammer right over the town hall. A pop from the Grand Warden, but I'm not sure he got all the dragons. A little bit of damage now from those gigabombs as the super minions storming out of the CC are going to get even more damage stacked on top. It looks like Renan's readying up his bats, though, because the dragons are going down fast, and they need support. 
Oh, they do need support, and I don't know if you noticed, but there was a Yeti at the top side of the base where we had an outlying wizard tower. That's the splash damage I'm talking about that you have to worry about. Eliminating that keeps the bats trained in to line with these defenses, gets them in that safe zone. No more freezes needed until he oh. gets to this back end. Oh, no! And down they go! <gasps> that Eagle artillery was so heavy. Dragon firing away at it, but the Wizard Tower took it out first. And that might be just the crucial exchange that denies Renan a three star. Now, fortunately for him, he does knock down the clan castle in the center using that dragon. He won't have to go through another layer of walls there, but there's no support for this Archer Queen. He's going to have to actually freeze that Eagle Artillery. Such a heavy blow to Renan's offense. Pops the last ability, and with only one free spell left, Lady B, I think he's going to come up short. Yeah, coming up short again. Unfortunately, this has not been the match for Raynan this time around. Um, oh, and we're seeing this 89%, which I am a bit worried about after what we saw from yesterday's match against uh, Death Dealers, Banks. Yes, exactly. It's so difficult to see that that one strong defensive structure staying up and that just destroyed those bat spells. And it's just not something that you feel so bad in with such careful planning. Like you mentioned, Lady B, that Yeti at the top side managing to take out the Wizard Tower to create an opening for the bats to just clean up. And that one defensive structure, Woody, they're going to have a little bit of work to catch up if Death Dealers keep putting the momentum on them. Death Dealers have been drinking their milk because they've got calcium and vitamin D to fortify their bases. Super strong and holding on to defense. They are now in the lead on the first round of attacks. Looking to push that even further will be Indy 317. Indy 317 picked up a two-star 98% on his war yesterday. I'm noticing an early stab here with some spells on the interior, but uh, did he get enough value out of that, Lady B? I noticed you were reacting. Um, absolutely. He got enough value on this, and it's the Warden Walk that now is shaped up perfectly. I am a bit worried. He's got the single targeting Inferno to worry about, but I noticed that he's brought along a Freeze. And if he times the Witches right coming through, the Witches and the Skellies will take the lead to take that on, so the Warden doesn't have to worry about it so much. And again, we get to see the use of a Yeti to help shape up a path, help shape up the funnel here. He just needs to ensure that these Witches move in. But again, like you pointed out, Woody, he was so close to picking up that three-star yesterday, and we might just see this connection coming in for Death Dealers. Big, heavy funnel set up in the bottom right and the top now. Going to support these witches as they all start to crash in on this base. A far and away Eagle Artillery is going to be raining down hellfire on them the entire time, though. Unless Indy's got some secret strat to pierce deep in through. That splash damage is going to be devastating, especially if these healers can't stay on top of the witches early eternal tome and i gotta wonder if that was the right move or not indy's gotta get this town hall down faster he's about to soak a gigabomb right in his face yeah that early eternal tome definitely needed with all that damage oh, oh no but he gets a little bit of flip action here he's still the warden's down b no not the warden <laughs> But what does he have remaining? We've got a swirl of action coming in, and it's not just the Warden, it's the Witches that went down. All that damage, it was needed for that Warden ability, but this was a huge bait of a base powering through Marinol, not wanting to let them have this one go. I can't believe this turnaround here. This is the strongest defense we have ever seen in this month's competition. Indy 317 is struggling to get the two star and it's not even guaranteed at this point. Two more balloons and a wizard just needs to knock down one more building and barely finds a builder hut on the edge to get that 50%. This is absolutely catastrophic for the death dealers who have got basically no chance now to win on percentage. They have got to hold on to their hopes, protecting that three-star lead as best they can because the defenses from Marinal have done the unthinkable, keeping that percentage down in the 50s, Lady B. Oh, I, I, I'm just in shock. I blinked my eyes. The Warden and the Witches went down. Everything went kaput. And with all that, 
we could be talking about Death Dealer's hopes of a safe move on into tomorrow's match. Uh, that's, uh, that's a tough recovery now. I mean, we talk about the percentage needed in order to work through and try and keep on par, and it's usually around that 85% mark. So hitting around 50% is almost certainly a no return zone, and INTZ can now capitalize off of this, Woody. I was watching that replay and noticed that the Grand Warden was being hit by a single target Inferno, which forced out his ability early. It was almost a save there as the healer started to get him back juiced up again, but splash damage from the Eagle Artillery was, I think, what finally finished him off. And without a Warden, you are going to be out of luck. That's why the Eternal Tome popped early. It wasn't a choice on his part. It was because he was dying. Oh, and you know, like you, you hate when that happens. I told you I was worried about that single targeting Inferno and it came into play, but let's see if Bernal can capitalize off of this for his team coming through with the Zap Quake Lalo. We are seeing a lot more of these Zap Quake Lalos back around um, in, in this month, uh, well, this week's qualifiers for October. And it's, it's nice and refreshing because I love the Lalo meta. I can't do it myself. I, I am a self-proclaimed potato lallower, so it's refreshing to see the pros do it here. And Bernal kicks us off with a beautiful hero dive, the king serving as the tank for the royal champion and the queen to help shape up pathing, but taking on some of these key defenses. We've got the clan castle down from the Zapquake, but the heroes take on that scatter shot. Now we just have to worry about the impact from the eagle and last remaining scatter here. Well, you are a YouTuber, so there's no surprise that you would be a self-proclaimed potato lawlower. <laughs> Bernal will be the next man to hit in this war. That triple Lalo is going to get some early stab action here from the Queen. Doesn't quite reach the Town Hall. Oh, no! Never mind! She activates it! That's going to be a lot of damage coming in on Bernal's forces and actually requires an early freeze here next to that wall wrecker trying to get the rest of his army onto that Town Hall. Sneaky Goblins coming out of the wall wrecker are going to have no problem at all taking it down, but they are out of here, and Bernal is now going to have to move on to the main phase of his raid. A bit late for my taste, but La Loon attacks can go quite fast especially with the haste. Here he goes. Yeah, I think a minute 30 mark is perfectly fine for what he's got down. As long as you've cleared out just about 50, 55% of the base, you can certainly start at a minute 30 and get the job done. And that's what we see him doing here, coming in with the eagle on the back and never a position you want to be in unless you're packing the freeze and the haste combination to hold it off and sweep those loons through. But they are right there, so haste not needed. And Bernal coming in. Pounding down that three-star here for INTZ and trying to stake this big claim early on, Banks. You can't do that, Death Dealers. You can't do that. You can't put up a 55% two-star against a team like INTZ because Bernal will take that chance with both hands and dump a triple on you because that is just what's happened. INTZ have now leveled up the stars. It's even there, and Death Dealers are going to have to make this a stars race if they've got any chance of winning this because INTZ are commanding the percentage right now, Woody. That's right, Banks. Bernal has burned it all to the ground. INTZ take a big leap forward as Caribou of the Death Dealers, wandering through the forests, sights his next quarry, drops the spells in and finishes off a scatter shot early. Barbarian King with a question mark above his head, wondering what just happened and if there's anything he can do to defend. A Warden Walk on the outside now will start the main phase of the attack as healers are going to keep him high and mighty above the action. Coconut Lude streaming in all around, but I'm not sure they've caught a single Seeking Air Mine yet. Not necessarily the best start from Caribou, but here we go with the funnel on the left side corner now. Barbarian King to support a Siege Barracks going to funnel in the troops. Here come the Witches, Lady B. Oh, the Witches are going to make their way through. Open wall access is exactly what they need. The King with a perfect start here to keep that momentum moving along with the assist of the P.E.K.K.A. And we do have the Wizards actually coming out to support the Witches. Jump's going to lead these right through into the core of the base. This is pathing very nicely for Caribou. And I think that he has a lot that he feels he needs to make up for yesterday, having pulled in a 68%. And now that he knows his team, he's really reliant upon some sort of turnaround, the pressure's on. 
A bit of a tricky play here. That CC Lava Hound's gonna pop right in the middle of the base. Exactly what Caribou does not want to have to deal with at this point. He needs to maximize his offense right now with Inferno Towers burning up on him. Eagle Artillery firing down. He's got no time to waste. Jump spell is down and the witches are doing their best to clear these hurdles. Firing away on all cylinders. The rage spell has finally withered away. Bony Brothers, the skeletons hopping over and finding so much fiery fury on the other side of these walls. I don't know if they can handle it. Caribou is getting burnt to a crisp now, Lady B. Oh, that queen ability to use just a tad bit too early. You want to use it later. Not that he had a choice necessarily, but you want to try and save it for this back end. Healer's getting roasted by the multi-targeting Inferno. Queen just taking down the eagle, but so much remains and there is so little left behind. The Yetis aren't going to have much more of a leg and there we go. They die out. Yetamite's trying to pick up a little bit more percentage, but it's not going to be enough and definitely not the way we we are seeing INTZ coming through with their performance. This is one of the biggest turnarounds that we have seen in a war this month. Caribou picking up a two star in the 70 percentage now. The Death Dealer started off so strong, a three star and knocking INTZ down a peg with a defenses win as well. But all of a sudden they are just collapsing under the might of these Brazilians. The squad has got such strong and reliable offense and as we are seeing time and again their defensive base building skills are so effective at denying the triple caribou from death dealers does not find what he was looking for no and again this is this is a tough situation to be in you know you're going up a t up against a team that has pulled in perfect wars in past qualifiers we've seen INTZ coming through yesterday 14 stars their history is averaging about 13 to 14 so you know you need to bring your a game and step it up and unfortunately that is not the connection we are seeing from death dealers at the moment but anything can happen and we're gonna have to see if there's any defensive possibility for death dealers here as a loop comes in bringing in the witches again Loop as a perfect attacker for INTZ, picked up three three stars last month and another triple just yesterday. He is in the Halloween spirit as he has brought even more spectacular dozen witches to this next fight. Warden Walk is some long range action to get the funneling started over here on the right corner, but it doesn't even look like he's going to be going for the town hall early on. Oh, wait, hold on. He's going to go support the Archer Queen now. Really good switch off here for Loop Zira as it Looks like the main stage of the attack is moving in from that five o'clock position. Ice Golem out in front to soak a few shots for these witches as they start to summon their skeletons, getting that big bony rib cage out in front to take the blows as they are sure to suffer a lot of hurt as they move in toward the middle of the base. And that was a smart move, starting off with the Warden because he's an easy pull back around if you do a Warden walk rather than a Queen walk. So the Queen bringing him through into the position he wants to get in. And now we get to see the Warden successfully popping off that ability, keeping everything safe, and he wanted this to go off exactly the way it has. We've got the continuation of pathing. This is key for these witch attacks. You need momentum moving into the base, but you need something to support along the outside edges and this is why witches work so well because when you have the openings of the walls you've got the skellies to do the tanking and the witches can just reach over those walls because they are ranged units here but the connection needs to come here in the back as he heads his way to the eagle Double bubble toil and trouble! Loop Zero's witches have concocted a magical brew of destruction. Hog Riders supporting a royal champion attack on the left side are gonna be the additional oomph that he needs, but oh no! A giant bomb explodes, catching so many hogs. That is gonna require the shield coming out from that royal champion. The last minute of combat now, and so many witches have fallen, but a few still remain for the last line of defense. That single, I mean, multi target inferno is burning them all up so quickly but the skeletons will not be denied they have cracked through the final interior layer here a, a single ability left for this archer queen should be enough to finish it off i think loop zero is on his way to his fifth three star he is this was a fabulous i i've not seen intz coming through with witches since yesterday, yesterday was the first time Marinol bringing it in, Lube Zara bringing it in, Banks, this is insane.
Loop Zero turns up to Death Dealer's front door. Knock, knock. Happy Halloween. Triple right on the board. That's two triples for INTZ so far. And Death Dealers really need to switch things around because it is looking like curtains for them so far, Woody. Yeah, I've heard of trick or treat, but this is triple or treat. INTZ pulling ahead, not just a massive lead on percentage, but also a one star pickup now, pulling back from the deficit that Death Dealers had earlier in the game. But Heisen knows that any given Saturday can see a change of fates again. Twisting the knife into INTZ will be this hybrid army. Not prepping the witches this time. It's going to be uh, that low and long slog through a base with lots of single target infernos. Lady B, when you're thinking about a ground-based attack, because we already know you're a potato law learner, when you're thinking about a ground-based attack, <laughs> what would make you prefer a hybrid army over mass witches? Um, hybrid army over mass witches, obviously the pathing of the base, we don't see open chambers or as many on this, and it depends on the value you can pick up with it. The queen working her way into the town hall chamber is going to be a great elimination, and it means we can narrow out the path a lot. Hybrids need narrowed out paths, so if you can provide that, you know that you have a good support here for it. And those key things that you want to take down are things like the town hall, um, the eagle, and the clan castle. You want those eliminated, and that's exactly what he's going for. At least two of those options here, the town hall and the clan castle with the queen, and the pathing's narrowed out. So Heisen, he is the three-star hitter one of them from yesterday's Death Dealers match, and he's looking to bring this through, wanting to at least really show up. And, you know, we know that it's a tough go for them on their percentage, but you still got to bring everything you have and prep for the next go around. And with this beautiful queen charge, I think he's got a nice solid start. Yeah, crucially ensuring that he doesn't activate the Town Hall until he's ready to pop it down fast. The third raid spell for this Queen Charge makes it into the center of the base, grabbing the first star. Jill about to be uh, engaging the enemy Queen now, needs to pop that ability. He takes a lot of damage, but will barely survive. Unfortunately, a Giant Bomb is going to take out a lot of her supporting archers. The healers are going to be switching off partially onto the Hog Riders now, trapped over in a tornado. A Seeking Air Mine catches one. Heisen is not getting the good luck he was hoping for early on as traps are springing out of nowhere and tearing his troops apart, Lady B. Yeah, the unfortunate thing is we don't have enough of a funnel on the outer edge, which means we could potentially see some of those miners splitting up. And with Queen dying out, this does hurt a bit. Now, he is fortunate that he's got the miners staying inside this base. The wizard's actually doing that supportive action from the outside. Hog splitting up to try and help in the core. And he does have a leg to stand on here because he's got the royal champion ability. But the only big problem coming up is a spread out scatter and uh, single targeting Inferno Tower that will pose a huge threat, but he's got to time this right with that Royal Champion ability if he wants to stand a chance, though I'm a bit worried on time as well. You're right, this is getting really close, coming down to the wire. Fortunately for Heisen, a miner and a hog rider that had wandered off managed to trigger another couple of traps, giant bomb and spring traps going off, but it's a question of whether or not these miners and hogs can stay on task. 88% of the base, but only 15 seconds left to finish it off. Pekka is unfortunately trapped on an interior wall, and Heisen's not getting the damage that he needs to finish it off. A ferocious assault here, but he's left short with a time fail as the last second tick away a two star 98 percent is heart-wrenching for heisen and the death dealers oh that is painful to watch because it had the makings of turning into a three star he played his cards right he did everything he possibly could just not making it to that final part there but if they try and maybe shake off these nerves i don't know if it's the nerves of coming up against intz you're talking about big players, big numbers that they pull in. If they can shake that off later today, perhaps they could try and see till tomorrow. All right, no bones about it. It's no longer a witch-based hit. Stellino from INTZ is taken to the skies once again. Got the super wall breaker ready to crack in here with his archer queen, but no healers or ice golems for this Sui charge. The heroes are going to be getting some spell support instead, knocking down the eagle artillery and the archer queen early on. Really key identification there from Selino, but at what cost? He's only got a couple of haste spells and freeze spells now to support the Laloon push later on, and he's got to maximize value here early in this step. Yeah, it's nice value that's picked up, though. It's it's deciding what you're getting 
for your spell value versus what you're taking out. And this creates the pathing because you've got a nice loop around with that cord out section of the base. Heroes coming into support. Look at that Royal Champion go taking on one of those scatter shots. So the only damage we are now really talking about for the impact of these loons is that scatter shot here. And that we've got a warden ability. We've got a stone slammer. We've got freezes and we do have the town hall. So we are going to have to worry about this though either the stone slammer or the scatter shot um or the stone slammer or the blimp could potentially take on the town hall here but it's not a lot of huge spread of damage that i think he's got to worry about this is a perfect shape for Selino's attack. He's ensured that with this C-shaped base still remaining, that big punch in the center is going to carve out a major uh, path for these balloons. But we're starting off a bit slow here now. Stone Slammer goes deep in to get the CC pull. He's got a lot to focus on here without any uh, additional uh, troops to dive into the center. He's got to hope that a dragon from that Stone Slammer is going to be enough to finish off these super minions. He's got some poison to help out, but they are taking a lot of damage and not getting it in the group quick enough, Lady B. Yeah, I'm a bit worried about these super minions. Try poisoning them up. Not enough for the dragon. We will see them get knocked down. Now, I, don't, I know he did not want to hold off and use that freeze because he wanted to use it for the back end. It does slow things up, but you know what? Selenio's got it under control calm cool collected that freeze for the back end scatter shot exactly what's needed in combination with the haste here rc goes down thanks to a perfect snipe from those headhunters and selino's got lots of time remaining big scare over on the bottom right side now as air skeletons are going to come out they are targeting onto those poor minions taking them down balloons can't get the target there and it's just the headhunter trying to snipe as many as she can before the wizard tower takes her out soaking shots from the wizard tower that was perfect though as the balloon stayed safe throughout all of that and Salino is on his path to victory the three star secures it all intz with another triple it's two stars ahead of the death dealers who who are left without a hope and prayer banished to the nether realm they will be down in gehenna waiting for their chance in the lower bracket unless there's a massive upset in this next round banks yes this is the intz that we know and remember from yesterday maybe starting off with a little bit of a hiccup but now they are back in full force and just triple after triple after triple it is so intense and death dealers just not managing to keep up with the pace of a powerhouse clan like intz lady b yeah, this is a you're you're in a tough match if you're going up against INTZ, not only offensively, but defensively, as they are showing. They've come in wanting to claim their stake for tomorrow's match. Death Dealers just continuing to move along and show us what they've got, though. And Khan's bringing us in with a Queen Charge hybrid, but using that temporary skeleton barrel. We started seeing those yesterday, which is absolutely incredible and fun. Creates a great funnel opportunity with the skeletons that come out, but we do not get the queen setting in place for the single IT and he does not want to force his ability. Gets that freeze down just in the nick of time. But is the rage going to be enough? We've got headhunters coming out. Woody, I'm scared. Poison Spell dropped early to deal with those headhunters, but they're not going to have that available now for the super minions out back. They're closing in on the queen, but fortunately for her, she's topped back off with those healers, even pushed out of the raid spell. They're doing their best to get her back up to full health. Air Sweeper is doing some amazing work on defense, but just cannot deny the raid spell ability uh, to keep the queen nice and healthy. Healers are topping her back off. It's the main stage of the attack begins now with Barbarian King over on the right side. Siege Barracks as well to get a P.E.K.K.A. and some additional wizards into the action. This is a really minor heavy army as we're seeing uh, the buried deep underneath the right side walls. They're moving on toward the town hall in an interesting jump spell now dropped by this queen over here on the left side. It's going to get some, some additional help taking down the enemy queen going in for a single target Inferno. But can she survive this encounter? She locks the Eagle Artillery first, Lady B. Yeah, the Eagle Artillery all does not go down here. This is gonna hurt. That queen needed good supportive action for this hybrid. It means we're gonna continue to see the rain down impact of that Eagle and the back end scatter shot. When you bring that jump, when you bring the investment of the queen, you expect so much out of her. And we are down for the count on spells. No freezes to hold this off. 
which means no opportunity to work through and get this done. But we do get the healer swap, which helps out just a tiny bit. But as the miners pop up to take on those defenses, take on the remaining structures, that's when they get the damage from the eagle. And that's why you see it wipe out so quickly. I, oh, that queen. He did everything he could. could. He had me. He had my heart racing at the start that he was going to lose her. The recovery was great. Didn't force that ability, but then in the end, not enough to get the value she needed here. And that was the eagle and the scatter shot. The last hit comes down and Khan is left with a two star 84%. Acheron, Cositis, Leith, and Phlegathon. They call themselves the Death Dealers, but they're swimming with the fishes in the river sticks. They are in an awful position now as INTZ with the same number of stars after just four attacks has got a higher percentage of destruction. Only need to get a single star in this next fight and Marinal is not going to be happy with just that. Looking for another triple to give his team the second 14 Team star performance this month so far. They have got their sights set on the golden ticket and are ready to charge through to the playoffs. One more victory here and now is all they need. And Marinal is going to be coming heavy in here with the super witches, ready to get those big boys busting through, Lady B. I I I, I love Marinal doing super witches. I have done tons of streaming for INTZ and I had never seen them doing super witches until this weekend so really incredible sight and witches at that I mean these are Lalo attackers these are hybrid attackers and bringing it through with the super witches showing how they adapt to the meta to what needs to be done you gotta give it to them but Marinal wanting to go home again today with another 14 stars on the board giving it everything Thing he has for a big showing because this is their last shot the last qualifiers here but the big boys need to continue with that tanking as the eagle rains down a giant bomb explodes in the top compartment, but it's no problem at all for these healers staying right on track here. They'll pop down the enemy royal champion and finish off this lava hat with no problem at all. Boom, there goes the town hall and INTZ have secured their spot in the playoffs. Death dealers have been sent back down to the lower bracket. Their victory over the Queen Walkers yesterday is going to be challenged once again as Marinal secures the second star now, surpassing the 50% mark and finding even more trouble in the middle. Slowed down a bit, but he is going to to get back into the swing of things royal champion is going to be moving in hot on the left corner her shield ready to be tossed as soon as she finds the ideal target knocking down a few more big defenses though it's the wizard tower archer tower and a big old multi-target inferno that are firing away at the big boys now lady b yeah a lot of damage but they can take on this impact now it's the time factor that's always the issue but he brought the five witches and this is looking uh, I don't want to jinx it, but fairly solid. I got to say, too, we've been asking for the Super Valks. So we've not seen them, but we did see the Valk coming out of the Clan Castle, out of that Siege Barracks with the Yetis for the assist on some of that cleanup. And that is something you always have to think about with these type of time-consuming attacks. And it's exactly what Marinal thought about to get the job done with the Super Witch. Pull in the three-star for the victory for today's match and go through to tomorrow, Banks. INTZ are in the playoffs tomorrow. A truly masterful performance under a fair amount of pressure. Opening up with this war, they opened up with an 89% two-star and Death Dealers put a triple on the board, applying a bit of pressure into INTZ, but they did not buckle. They powered on and they absolutely smashed their way through those bases. Now, while we look at these uh, stats that are going to come up the board for these two clans, we need to remind you that Death Dealers are going to have another opportunity later on today they will face Queen Walkers to try and stay in the tournament this weekend and try and stay in and just they're going to have to battle Queen Walkers though if they're going to make it through to Championship Sunday it's going to be a repeat of yesterday's match can they do it again Woody? I think they've got a shot at it I gotta say their performance in this last war against INTC is not inspiring a whole lot of confidence